Welcome to everyone. I'm Jim Johnson, and to assist me with today's match commentary, I'm sitting next to that famous ex-player, Bob Biffin. Yeah, here I am, Jim. Well, I hope you're settled in and ready for the match. Yes, I think I'll just slip out and get myself a small beverage before the kickoff. In this classic underdog confrontation, the favorites will surely win. and the match is on! This one is gonna get the hand slapped at the end of the match. Better a smack on the hand than a punch in the face. Wizards have not always been able to cast spells safely from behind the sidelines. Were you playing at the time in an Albion League, a second division that prohibited spell casting from off the pitch? Oh yes, they were great times. I remember fans traveling to games just to see how well Wizards stood up to the mad charge of a raving Blood Bowl star. The noise created by a sizzling fireball, followed by the characteristic sound of the snapping of a wizard's neck. They can start to move forward. You can't say much about that. Full-blooded, but perfectly legal. Recent medical reports stated that cerebral hemorrhages were less frequent in Blood Bowl players. Amazing, come to think. Not really, when you consider that brains are also less frequent. his first punch. We know the opponent will be out for lunch.
Did you know, Jim, that the Trax Warriors were the first people to win the Zlatan Cup back in 2491? You mean no one else had won the cup before, Bob? Uh, no, Jim. It was the first time a non-lizard team participated in the Lustrian Cup, and the Amazons took it by storm and grabbed the trophy from Sotek's word. Jim, it's broken now. <laughs> into the game room. Balls in play. There was a time when the colleges of magic hadn't yet ruled on limiting wizard assistance to teams. Who could forget the infamous 2472 Quagmire incident? when rampant spellcasting caused the entire Bright Crusader Stadium to sink into the earth. Nobody could forget that. People were blinded for miles around the stadium. Plays the ball. Ah. 